Because they did it, we now have three eyewitnesses to the deed, giving us our only real clear proof of government involvement in the conspiracy to murder. Thank you very much. It was a stupid idea for them to have did it. What can they gain by it? Nothing. The government doctors were going to lie about the wounds. Dr. Humes was going to say what they told him to say. It didn't matter what the wounds looked like. But they went ahead and they did it anyway for the pure pleasure of doing it because that's just the kind of animals they are. Well, come on if you're coming. I'm going in after them. Ain't no help for it. It's just the kind of animal I am. Way down the hole, miles past the lies that showed up on the evening news, hundreds of pages past anything we've looked at so far, 333 pages deep into a 450-page report, we stumble upon a casual discussion of the fuel selector valve. The fuel selector valve was removed and examined. The valve itself was found in the off position. Now, stop. Take your shoes off and get ready to set a spell because if we're looking for something outrageous, this is it. This is what we came for, ready? Now think for a moment. You don't have to be a genius or an aviation expert to wonder at the meaning of these nine words. The fuel selector valve in the off position will cut off gasoline to the engine. Let's take this one step at a time. First, you can't fly very far with the valve in the off position. So that means the valve had to have been moved to this position in the last moments that the plane was in the air. This is an obvious point, but absolutely mind-boggling. These nine words tell us that as John Kennedy's plane was suddenly and catastrophically launched into a headfirst disastrous plunge towards the sea, John, or his wife, or someone on that plane was overcome by an uncontrollable urge to fiddle with the fuel selector valve. This is absolutely the strangest thing imaginable. It is literally unbelievable. Try it yourself. Get out the yellow pages, look up flight schools, call one up, talk to the guy in charge, and ask him what he thinks of the idea that the fuel selector valve of John Kennedy's plane was found in the off position. He won't believe you. Don't get mad or insulted, but you just better recognize. If we came down this hole looking for something strange, we have found it. We can go home now. Just kidding. We're just getting started. The point is, this is strange. It is obviously strange. You don't have to be a genius, an expert in aviation, or even particularly insightful to see that. Hey, wait. I know. That's it. Why didn't I think of that before? Why didn't you think of that before? Why didn't the NTSB think of that? Kennedy accidentally turned off the gasoline supply to the engine, the motor died, and down they went. No? Uh, no. You it see... Could. But an engine failure in and of itself would not force the airplane to make that kind of a spectacular dive. These airplanes, believe it or not, do have a capability of gliding. I'm not sure what it is in the Piper uh, Saratoga, but in the particular airplane that I fly, for example, fully loaded at gross weight, which is 3,880 pounds, it will glide two miles for every thousand feet of altitude. So if you're at 5,000 feet, presumably, under the right circumstances and at the proper airspeed and the right attitude, you could glide about 10 miles. So if you accidentally turn off the fuel selector valve, you can still glide at 2,500 feet for five miles to a soft landing. On the way down, you get on the radio and help is on the way. You're not going to be in the water for more than a few minutes. You may not even get wet. Except, hey, John John, you dummy. Why don't you just turn the valve back on and start the motor up? Oh, yeah. Okay, very good. Well, so we figured out all by ourselves that the plane didn't crash because that dummy John John turned off the fuel selector valve. But don't be lazy. Be hardworking, determined, and thorough. Make a few calls. Call up some experts. Get out the yellow pages and call up these flight school guys. And again, ask a few more questions about fuel selector valves. Uh, Mr. Wizard, what's a fuel selector valve? Well, Jimmy... An airplane fuel selector valve has two primary uses. The first one has to do with distributing the weight of the gasoline evenly on the plane during the flight. You see, any aircraft must carry a great deal of fuel that is going to fly over a long distance without stopping to refuel every few minutes. In a Piper Saratoga, the gas tanks are located here and here. The large tanks each hold about 51 gallons of fuel. But you see, Jimmy, the fuel not only takes up a good deal of room on the plane, it also weighs a great deal. And as you can imagine, on any plane, it is very important to keep the weight evenly distributed. A lopsided plane will be difficult, even dangerous, to maneuver. 
It is for this reason the pilot must monitor the weight of the gasoline in each tank and use the fuel selector valves switching back and forth between the tanks to keep the weight in the tanks more or less equal and the plane balanced. However, the fuel selector valve also has an off position. That seems like a crazy thing, Mr. Wizard, and dangerous too. Why would anybody ever want to cut off the fuel to the engine in an airplane? That's a good question, Jimmy. But now let me ask you another. Suppose you're flying along at 5,000 feet when suddenly your engine develops a small gasoline leak near the motor. And suppose, as is likely to happen, the gasoline from the leak catches fire. What are you going to do? The fire will turn the small leak into a large leak. The small fire will turn into a large fire. The wind will make the fire spread quickly. And while you and your friends are burning to death, you might even think to crash your plane headfirst into the sea at 200 miles an hour just to end your terrible suffering. I know, I know what to do, Mr. Wizard. I'll turn the fuel valve to off. That'll cut off the fuel to the motor. Without any gasoline, the fire will burn itself out, and I can glide for miles to a nice, safe landing. Why, of course, Jimmy. How right you are, clever child. So you see, boys and girls, the fuel valve is not installed on airplanes so that clumsy pilots can accidentally kill their motors and find themselves in a needless crash. It's a safety feature, of course. But there's one more thing you should know before you go. The FAA knows that not all pilots out there are young safety prodigies like young Jimmy here. Some are even accident-prone. And that's why every fuel selector valve has a special safety feature, an idiot button. You see, you cannot accidentally turn the fuel valve to off. It simply can't be done. The fuel valve can only be turned off in an emergency situation by holding down this button while simultaneously turning the fuel selector lever. Thus, the accidental turning off of the lever is a virtual impossibility, even in planes whose pilots may be accident prone. It simply can't be done accidentally. Then how in the heck did the fuel valve end up in the off position in John Kennedy's plane, Mr. Wizard? Hmm, I don't know. Hmm, indeed. Thanks a lot, Einstein. That really helps. It couldn't happen by accident. That means someone in the plane had to have done it on purpose, in the seconds before they all died. Oh, well, that clears everything up, right? Uh, well, no, not really. In fact, not even a little bit. This doesn't answer anything. It just creates more questions. Like, how come nobody at NTSB thought it was even worth mentioning? I mean, you want headlines. John Kennedy killed himself. Apparently distraught over his millions of dollars, fame, good looks, his successful magazine, and beautiful wife, he decided to end it all by deliberately flipping the switch on his fuel selector valve, cutting off fuel to his engine. The plane then glided smoothly for another three miles, during which time rescue assets were able to mobilize and arrive. Oh, uh, wait, that's right. You can't really kill yourself by turning off the fuel selector valve. So, new headline. While John Kennedy Jr.'s plane was falling out of the sky, rushing catastrophically towards the sea, he, or someone on that plane, decided that since they couldn't save their own lives, they might as well conserve resources by cutting off fuel to the engine. Do you like that one any better? No? It doesn't really work, does it? You can't really kill yourself by turning off the fuel selector valve. But you can kill yourself by grabbing the controls and pushing them violently forward, throwing your plane into the sea at 200 miles per hour. This radar analysis is part of the NTSB report. It's buried at page 321 of the report, but it's one of the most basic and important pieces of the evidence in any investigation. Any news hound who wanted to could have gotten a look at it. This line shows the tail end of the plane's very gradual descent from 5,500 to 2,200 feet. Kennedy had not yet contacted the tower at this point, and FAA regulations require that you contact the tower before descending below 2,500 feet. So, being the meticulous pilot that he was, John brought the plane back up to 2,500 feet and contacted the tower. We don't know how long that conversation lasted, but if it lasted one minute, as soon as it was over, the plane began a catastrophic plunge into the sea. The conclusion seems obvious, doesn't it? It doesn't seem to matter what view you look at, south to north or east to west. It does not appear to be an accidental crash. It certainly looks as though someone on that plane decided to commit suicide the fun way with a bunch of other people. There's no spiral to be detected in these depictions of the radar evidence. There's no disorienting movement of the plane of any kind. No one was able to find any evidence in the wreckage of an explosion, fire, or other catastrophe. It appears then as though someone grabbed the controls of the plane and pushed them violently forward. How could the NTSB have missed this? 
How is it not worth mentioning as a possibility? How did the sharks in the media not go nuts over this blood-red evidence of more Kennedy self-destruction? I don't know, but those aren't really the questions I'm trying to answer here. You see, I'm still hung up on that freaking fuel valve.